All right, talking about um, organic chemistry, and the first thing we're going to cover is naming organic compounds. Let's take a step back for a second and talk about empirical, molecular, and structural formulas for compounds. Okay, so empirical formulas. The definition of an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms it contains. For example, if we look at C2H6, which is ethane, okay, what is the empirical formula? Well, you can see that it's got a 2 and a 6. They can both be divided by 2, so this is not the simplest whole number ratio, but the simplest whole number ratio would be 1 carbon to 3 hydrogen. So the empirical formula would be CH3. A molecular formula definition is the actual number of atoms of each element present. I should probably add that word of each element present. Okay, it can be deduced if both the empirical formula and a relative molecular mass are known. So, for an example, if you have a molecular formula of a compound, that's what we're looking for. If I have a relative molecular mass, which really just means molar mass, 30 grams per mole, and it has an empirical formula of CH3. Well, I know that the relative molecular mass of that empirical formula is 15 grams per mole, okay, from the periodic table. Given this relative divided by the empirical molecular weight tells me that there are two kind of empirical formulas within the molecular formula. Okay. So two times that it means it is a C2H6. All right, so kind of there's two, and I probably would put it over here. All right. Then we have structural formula. Structural formula gives us a better representation of the molecule. It shows how the atoms are bonded to each other. For a full structural formula, we're going to show every bond and every atom. Every bond and every atom. They're usually drawn at 90 degrees and 180 degree angles because it is just two-dimensional. It doesn't really tell us much about the geometry of the molecule, just how atoms are bonded in relation to each other. Important point. You have to draw the hydrogens. Okay. So if you're asked for a complete structural or a full structural, draw the H's. When in doubt, draw the H's. There's also a condensed structural formula. Okay, and this admits some of the bonds that are kind of understood, they can be assumed, and it groups atoms together. It contains the minimum information to describe the molecule unambiguously. So you do have to highlight functional groups, right? And here, this would be a condensed structural formula. Then we also have a stereochemical formula. And this attempts to show more of the geometry, the relative positions of the atoms and groups around a carbon, and we are going to be drawing these in three dimensions. Okay. So a d the um, convention is that a bond coming out of the page is shown as kind of an um, enlarging wedge. This would be in the page, and then coming out, this would be the atom that's actually coming out at you. Behind the page is a dotted line, dashed line, and in the page, meaning if that bond would be on the same plane as the page, would be a straight line. So if we take a look at methanol, well, this isn't methanol. This is methane. So let's just change this that it's methane. Okay. Tetrahedral, two could be in the plane. One is going to be behind the plane of the page. And then that hydrogen, this fourth one, is going to be coming out at you. If we do ethene, because I have just those three, it's trigonal plane, are all in the same plane, so all these bonds are in the same plane as the page. Okay. So, take a moment, draw empirical, molecular, full structural, or condensed for ethane, ethanoic acid, and glucose. Pause the screencast. 
Okay, and then here are the answers that you should have came up with. Wow, look at that. That's crazy talk. Okay? All right, IUPAC. This is the uh, world authority now recognized for naming chemicals. Right. So this is the common language that is used to name chemicals. You will find that chemists still hold on to um, common names for chemicals. Um, ethanoic acid being one of them, they're going to call it acetic. Um, so that being said, let's talk about how we uh, formally name names using the IUPAC system. Okay, first rule in naming a compound is to identify the longest chain of carbon atoms. This is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. It can go around a bend if it's drawn that way. It can be straight. It can be an S-curve. It Identify the longest chain. And then we're going to look at um, the stem names. Meth, eth, prop, Bute, pent, hex, hept, oct, and known. All right. So for alkanes, which are straight chains, the ending is an A-N-E. So CH4 is a methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane. Okay. If two chains have equal lengths, you're going to pick the one with more branch points. That doesn't happen very often. Okay. Rule number two, number the chains in the main chain. And it is important how you number them. Number the chain to minimize the position or the number of the following in this order. The thing you are naming the compound after, meaning a double bond, an OH group, etc. All right. If I have more than one double bond, I'm going to use the prefixes di, tri, tetra. I don't think you're going to have much more than four. All right. Then you want to minimize the number for the first branch or the substituent group. If both ends have the same first branching number, then the number of the chain to minimize the position of the second branch. So you want to have the numbers be smallest. If still in need of a tiebreaker, minimize the number of substituent group that comes first alphabetically. Right. In cyclic and aromatic, no numbers are needed if there's only one substituent. So, um, identify the functional group and attach the appropriate suffix. These are just going to be memorized as we um, go through the types and the functional groups, which hopefully um, you've at least started memorizing by this point. So you name the stem or the root from the longest carbon chain. Okay, if they are all single bonds, it's an ane, so C3H8 would be a propane. If I have a double bond in there, I'm going to end it with an ene. So here I have three carbons, so that's prop. There's a double bond, propene. It really is the same molecule if I flip it, so there is no need for a number. If I have a triple bond, it is an ene. So three carbons, it would be propine. Functional group OH, that's the alcohol. The suffix is the OL. If I have three carbons, it would be propanol. C triple bond N, functional group is a nitrile, propen, propane nitrile. That C is part of the three carbons. Okay. The aldehyde, anol, so I have propanol. Ketone, two carbon chain groups connected to a carbon with a double bonded oxygen ends in own three carbons in the chain it's three carbons in the chain propanone functional group carboxylic acid is an oic acid propanoic acid amine nh2 propanamine okay for the amine functional group, there's a special way if these H's are replaced by groups, okay, um, 
if they are both H's, I have a primary amine. If one H is replaced, I have a secondary amine. And if both, I have a tertiary um, amine. And we're going to use this N to show where the H's have been replaced and what have they been replaced with. All right, so here none of the H's have been replaced, so it's just propanamine or one aminopropane. Here I've replaced one of these H's. This N tells me that I've replaced one of the H's on my amine group. I've replaced it with a methyl, so it is an N-methylpropanamine. Here I've replaced both of the H's, so it's NN. I have two methyl groups, dimethylpropanamine. Moving on, here's the amide group. Okay, double bonded O on the carbon that is bonded to the N. It is propanamide. Amide, sorry, propanamide. I can do the same thing with the amide groups. Okay, primary amide, secondary amide, tertiary amide. Okay, no replacements on the hydrogen, propanamide. I have N-methylpropanamide and N-N-dimethyl. Okay, and you would name these groups um, depending on what, what they are. The ester group, C with a double bonded O, bonded to an oxygen and then has a R, another group here. Okay, this is an O8, O8. This R group is what is named first. So for this, I have this methyl group. It's a methyl propanoate. How do these esters form? Well, these are called really organic salts, where the alkyl group of the alcohol has replaced the hydrox hydrogen of the carboxylic acid. Their name puts the alkyl group first, followed by the name of the acid anion. Again, this is the one that's connected to the oxygen that's in the chain, methylpropanoate. Okay, this alkyl group has replaced the H of that carboxylic acid. How do we identify the position of functional groups? Well, we're going to identify them by showing a number inserted before the functional group ending. And this number refers to the carbon atom to which the functional group is attached when that chain is numbered starting at the end that will give the smallest number to the group. Okay, so if we look at this, we can see, hopefully you can identify, here is my functional group. It really doesn't matter with a uh, propane because it would be the same, but this is on the second group. So this would be a 2-propanol. This tells me that my functional group of the alcohol is off the second carbon. Here, my functional group really is this double bond. It's off the first carbon. So this would be a 1-butene. You can also, um, and this is actually the direction that the IUPAC is headed, insert the two right before the functional group ending, or the one right before the functional group ending. So this would be pro propen 2-all, or but-1-ene. Sometimes a functional group can only be in one place, and that way you don't need to show the number. For example, a carboxylic group always has to be at the end of the, or the beginning of the compound. So this would just be butanoic acid. The, uh, for a carbon chain with just three, um, the ketone functional group has to be off the second one. So that would be propanone, no number needed. So identifying side chains or constituent groups. Here my longest chain is three. So I have a, a methyl group coming off the second, so 2-methylpropane. Here my longest chain is these five, so I have a pentane. And off the 1-2-3rd group, I have an ethyl. 
3 ethyl pentane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 7 in the longest chain. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Either way, my longest chain is 7, so I have a heptane. And off of the Off the fourth carbon, I have a propyl group because I have three carbons, so four propyl heptane. Right. If I have a halogen, fluoro, chlorobromo, or iodo, this, which we learned in 10th grade, we could call carbon tetrachloride, is technically tetrachloromethane. If I have an NH2 group, right, it can be an amino group, so two amino ethanoic acid. Okay, because here I have, oh, there I have my acid. Okay, so rule five, assemble the name as a single word. So we have numbers, the number, the substituent, the root, and then any suffixes. So we want to list substituents alphabetically, meaning butyl is going to come before methyl. Multiples of one are present. We have to name di, tri, tetra. Okay? These are not part of the alphabetical name. For instance, triethyl will still come before dimethyl because ethyl comes before methyl. Okay, punctuation. Commas between numbers, hyphens between numbers and letters, and then you merge it all into one word. Okay, and the acceptance is the acid is word number two for carboxylic acid. So that's two, two words. Otherwise, it's all mushed together. All right. So now there is a list of examples. Um, by all means, come and check your answers with me in class. I'll be posting this screencast, but I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. And you can copy them down. By all means, come and check. Look, I did it. Cyclohexane, so this is dimethyl, 1,3-dimethyl, 2-propyl cyclohexane. Whew. Right. Here's another one. Pause it. Okay, let's number them so that we get to the functional group with minimizing the numbers. So I'm going to take that one because then my functional group is on the second one. It is a heptene because I have that double bond. The double bond is at the third carbon. Two methyl groups connected to numbers two and five. And I do kind of name these backwards. Or you can name it two, three. Uh-oh. That's not. This should be five. This should be a five. Two, five, dimethyl, hept, three, teen. There's another one. I have a bromo group and a methyl group. Benzene. Hmm. There we go. Because of the alphabetizing, one bromo, two methyl benzene. Or this is toluene. So you can name it two bromo toluene. Either one is fine. Or O stands for ortho. There's a ortho, para, and meta. Meta is, is when you're talking about like a benzene ring, meta is like two removed. Ortho, the two functional groups are right next to each other, and para, they're opposite from each other. If that doesn't make sense, please ask. Okay, so just for fun, what would this be? It would be a paradox. Ah, PhD doctor. All right. And this one? Because we're one removed, it is a metaphor. Haha, <laughs> four. This is a Ferris wheel. And a Mercedes Benz. Oh. All right, sorry about those last ones.